Hi dreamers, today I wanted to talk about NVIDIA and the semiconductor industry because we've had another wild week with NVIDIA. And if you look at this chart right here, you can see the parabolic rise in the share price as compared to their actual earnings histories and estimates. And for many conservative investors, the incredible highs of NVIDIA are starting to make people a little bit nervous. And we saw a bit of a sell-off this week. And even though their numbers are incredible, in terms of growth. The question is, will we see a little bit of a pause in the short term in terms of the share price? And that's causing some folks to take a little bit of profit and dollars off the table. And for some of you, you may be watching this whole thing on the sidelines, wondering if you've missed your chance or if there's any other way to jump in on this action. And so one thing I wanted to point out that I'm thinking about is, while it's true you can hold NVIDIA outright, and since the split, that provides more opportunities in terms of options play. But let's say that you're not into options and you're just thinking about creating a position for growth so that you don't miss out on the next 10 years of action. Well, another way to think about this play is just holding the entire semiconductor industry or the information tech sector. Because as you can see in this graph, the IT sector and specifically the semiconductor sector inside of that has greatly outperformed the S&P. So today I wanted to show you another way to hold NVIDIA and get in on the action with some passively managed ETFs with low expense ratios. And I'm going to show you them in order of selectivity and how they've performed against each other year to date over the last year, five years and 10 years. So let's get to it. Okay, the first one I wanted to cover in my selection is FTEC, which is the Fidelity MSCI Information Technology Index ETF. And you can see down here that it's passively managed and that the goal of this fund is to invest at least 80% of the assets and securities included in the fund's underlying index, which is the MSCI USA IMI Information Tech Index. And so if we scroll down, we can actually see what the top 10 holdings are. And you can see here it's heavily weighted in the names you would expect. Microsoft, Apple, and NVIDIA make up the vast majority, about 47%. Then you've got Avgo at just about 4%, and then the rest of the weightings according to the index. And if you look at all of the holdings by weight, you can see this basket has about 300 holdings with a broad basket that includes Oracle, Cisco, Texas Instruments, IBM, Micron Technology, KLAC, Marvel Tech, Microchip, SMCI, etc. And so this is the broadest basket of ETF I wanted to show you. And for this ETF, you can see in the distribution and expenses that the gross expense ratio is 0.08 and the yield is 0.7. So again, the reason to hold this would be to have a little bit of a position and exposure to a growth play. So now let's take a look at the next one, which is XLK, or the Spider Technology Select Sector. And as you can see down here, this investment seeks to trade equities in the Technology Select Sector Index. It is also passively managed. And if we go down to the weighting on this one, you can see by and large, its main holdings are Microsoft and Apple at about 43%. It holds NVIDIA at a much lower percentage and then Avgo, AMD, Qualcomm, CRM, etc. The interesting thing here, if you look at all of the holdings, is that this is a much more select basket of 67. And so this is a more focused subset in the tech sector. And so if you hold this ETF, you're starting to focus in on specific companies like Qualcomm, Applied Materials, Micron, LAM Research, KLAC, etc. And in terms of the distribution and expenses, we can also see a low expense ratio of 0.09 and a distribution yield of 0.71. So let's move on to my next selection, which is SOXX. This is the iShares Semiconductor ETF. And now we're zeroing in more specifically into the semiconductor industry. And down here you can see that this ETF is focused on tracking the investment results of the New York Stock Exchange Semiconductor Index. It's passively managed, and here are its top 10 holdings. NVIDIA at about 10%, Avgo at about 7.5%, and the same for Qualcomm. Then we have AMD, Micron, ADI, TXN, Microchip Tech, Intel, and KLAC. 
And if we look at its holdings by weight, now we can see a basket that's even more selective, holding only 33 companies. The rest of the holdings are listed here, with Taiwan Semiconductor, Applied Materials, LAM Research, Marvel, ASML, etc. And really the difference here is that this is a subset of the ETF we just saw. So we're getting tighter and tighter around these selections. And of course, I'm going to show you the relative performance at the end. And so the distribution and expenses here are 0.35%, so a little bit higher, and a distribution yield of 0.59. So let's go on to my last selection, which is SMH, the Vanek Semiconductor ETF. And as it states, this investment seeks to replicate as closely as possible the price and yield performance of the MVIS, US Listed Semiconductor 25 Index. It's passively managed, and you can see the top 10 holdings here, with NVIDIA at 23%, Taiwan Semiconductor at 12%, Avgo at 7.3%, followed by Qualcomm, Texas Instruments, ASML, Micron, Applied Materials, LAM Research, and ADI. And if you go to its basket of holdings, you can see them here listed out. After ADI, there's AMD, KLAC, Synopsys, Intel, Cadence Design, etc. And so why would you hold a basket like this instead of just NVIDIA? Well, one of the reasons is NVIDIA's value has been exposed to the market and everyone's focused on it right now. But potentially there's another company in here that is growing rapidly and the market has not really identified it yet. And thus by holding a basket of semiconductor companies, you might benefit if any one of these start to break out. And of course, because these are indexes and passively managed, they're going to automatically track the index and the weighting of these companies as they start to grow. So these percentages will change as those companies start to get bigger. And so for SMH, the expense ratio is 0.35 with a distribution yield of 0.43. So let's finish this out by taking a look at how they've performed against each other. So here's a custom graph I created in Seeking Alpha with my selections that I've done research on in the technology and semiconductor ETF space. And so here's how they've performed year to date. We've got FTEC, the most broad ETF, at 19.82% return, followed by XLK at 18.86% return. Then we've got SOXX, which is even more selective, at about a 30% return, followed by our most selective ETF, SMH, with above a 50% total return year to date. But you might be saying, Dream, this has been an extraordinary year so far for semiconductors. How does this look longer term? So let's take a look at one year return. We've got the broadest index in FTEC at 36%, followed by XLK at 35.87%, and then SOXX at about 54% total return, and SMH, the most dialed in into semiconductors, at almost 80% return. If we look at a three-year total return, we can see that trend pretty much continuing, with FTEC and XLK pretty close together, and the more selective funds of SOXX at 79% and SMH at 118%. At five years, we really see a separation with a total return of SMH at about 425%, with SOXX at 311%. And if we go out to 10 years, we see the winner is SMH at over 1,130%, followed by SOXX at about 890%, and FTEC and XLK pretty close together. So what I've decided to do is add FTEC, SOXX, and SMH to my portfolio so that I can add back a broad basket, a more dialed in growth basket, and then a pretty tight semiconductor basket. And these will be holdings that I'll just let drip and grow for the foreseeable future. So I hope that was helpful for you as you start to think about another way to hold NVIDIA, potentially in a broader basket that allows you to take advantage of not only future NVIDIA growth, but also the potential growth of other connected companies that are also fueling the total industry. Let me know what you think in the comments. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this dividend income update. And if you want a richer real-time experience with me, you can always follow me on Instagram or X. And if you're doing your own research using Seeking Alpha, feel free to find the link below to subscribe if you want. No pressure.
As always, I encourage you to do your own research, then implement and learn by putting it into practice. And as a reminder, I'm not a financial advisor, so keep in mind these videos are for entertainment and inspiration only. I'll see you on the flip side.